Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be checking out the 2015 Ford Mustang EcoBoost and as you can tell this is the convertible. So starting off with the interior, very comfortable seats and plenty of leg room. The steering column does come pretty close to my knee but it doesn't come into contact with it so overall it's fine there. I'm about 6'1 and I fit in here just fine. As I mentioned very comfortable seats, a good amount of cushion to them, plenty of adjustment in the seat and a well cushioned steering wheel as well. And so on the steering wheel you do have a lot of control. Uh, you can scroll through the different displays up front and you've got cruise control settings. This actually does have adaptive cruise control in a Mustang, so that's pretty cool. You've got your audio controls here and then volume controls for the infotainment system right there. Now one thing about the steering wheel that I wish you know would be a little bit different, the cruise control settings, you have to take your hand off the wheel to touch them. So if you are on the highway or something like that where you have to adjust the cruise control settings, you will have to take your hand off the wheel. Now the fact that it's adaptive cruise control means you're not going to be having to do that quite as much so that is a nice perk to it and you also do have paddle shifters which are on the steering wheel now as far as visibility looking out the front it's a little bit narrow but not too bad overall you do have a very long hood in front of you you know it's a long car and looking to the sides actually really good visibility checking out looking at your blind spot uh, great visibility as the windows go a decent amount back now with the convertible top up it isn't the best visibility uh, looking behind you it's fairly narrow the window uh, but overall the visibility is okay looking out the front somewhat narrow as I mentioned and the car is fairly large so overall it's fine now moving on to the infotainment system you've got the typical Ford sync thing going on here so navigation phone uh, your stereo control for whatever music you're playing and then your climate controls you've also got the separate climate controls down here uh, so pretty decent system to use you do have heated and cooled seats which is nice for convertibles because it gives you a bit of a wider temperature range that you can be outside with the top down you if it's too hot outside you can turn on the cooled seats if it's too cold outside you can turn on the heated seats and still have the top down so that's a nice perk now you also have down here uh, by the engine push start button you've got your hazards and then you've got these different drive mode selections so you can turn off your traction control you can alter the steering effort so you can put it in sport if you want it to have uh, less influence from the power steering assist or comfort if you want more influence from the power steering assist and basically you're just going to be reducing the amount of effort it takes to turn the wheel and then you also have these different drive modes. So you've got normal, sport plus. So when you put it in sport plus, you're gonna have a bit sharper throttle response. You're gonna put it in a bit more aggressive of a throttle map. And you're also going to increase the steering effort. And then you can put it into track mode, which is similar to sport, except what it's gonna do is intervene with the traction and stability control systems as well. Let you get a little bit more sideways, let you get a little bit more power down. And then finally you have a snow and wet mode, which you can put it in. And basically it's gonna be altering the traction control systems here fairly aggressively so you're not spinning the tires sliding around in wet or snowy conditions. Also a nice thing is within the gauge cluster up front you've got all kinds of information you can look at. You've got your boost or your vacuum, you've got your cylinder head temperature which is quite rare, I don't see that in many vehicles, air inlet temperature so that's a cool thing to see, oil temperature, transmission oil temperature, you've got the voltage of your battery, you also have an air fuel ratio indicator and typically I just see this floating around 14 to 1 in the Mustang. You also do have a few little track apps so you can use a acceleration timer, you can do a 0 to 30, a 0 to 60, a 0 to 100, an eighth mile and a quarter mile and it will time it for you so that's a nice little thing to do. And you also even have a braking performance. You can do 60 to 0 or 100 to 0. Now let's have a look under the hood. There's a 2.3 liter inline four cylinder with a twin scroll turbocharger, direct injection, four valves per cylinder with variable valve timing on both the intake and the exhaust, and produces 310 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 320 pound feet of torque at just 3,000 RPM. And as you can see, it's quite a spacious engine bay because, of course, this does have to house the V8 engine as well. So with the EcoBoost engine, one of the benefits is you're going to have a lot more space around the engine. Now, for $2,000, they also offer a performance package for the Mustang EcoBoost, and it does seem like money well spent. It's going to get you wider tires, 255 over 40, rather than the 235 width, which you'd find on something like a Beetle R-Line. You're also going to get larger wheels, you're going to get new front springs, and you're going to get the GT Mustang's larger brakes, which is a significant benefit because in the rear on the stock EcoBoost, you're going to have solid discs, and you can upgrade to larger vented discs with the GT brakes. You're also going to get a larger radiator, it's going to delete the spoiler, and you're going to have a larger rear sway bar. So how does it drive? Well, let's start just by clearing one thing up. This is a pretty heavy vehicle. It's a little over 3,500 pounds in fastback form and about 3,660 pounds in the convertible form. 
So the vehicle weighs about as much as a Nissan Maxima, which is a full-size sedan, and in convertible form, it actually weighs more than a base Subaru Outback, which is pretty much an SUV. So this thing has some heft to it, and it is noticeable. And so part of you can't help but think when you're driving it that even though this EcoBoost 2.3 liter is an incredible engine, it's extremely fuel efficient, it's very powerful, and it produces a lot of torque on the low end, Part of you still can't help but shake that this car was built for a V8. And so you put this little 2.3 liter in it and you get the benefit of added fuel economy, but you don't get the benefit of a small engine in a small car where you've got this lightweight, nimble thing. And so with the Mustang, it kind of feels a bit weird having that small engine in such a large car because you don't get to fully take advantage of it since you're taking on so much added heft. Now that said, it's still decently quick. You put your foot down, and yeah, you're going to smile. It's a fun time for sure. But it's just that you're pulling around so much extra weight. Uh, and I think a lot of that extra weight is because you're in a vehicle that accommodates a V8 and this one doesn't have it. And so because of that, performance slightly suffers. Now let's take it through some corners. Now it's a bit of a beast to thrash around through these corners. And it actually does it surprisingly well, even for its heft. You know, you don't really notice too much uh, body roll. You don't notice too much understeer or oversteer if you get into it a little bit more aggressively. It seems to actually handle it pretty well. And so for that, I have to give it credit. That said, it's still a bit of a beast going through here and you really have to kind of manhandle it to get it through it to do it properly. Now, as far as the steering, it actually has a decent weight to it, so I do like that. Uh, the feel to it is actually pretty good. Now, the responsiveness is a little bit slow. It's not quite as fast as some of the other cars out there, and I think, once again, that's kind of due to the heft. You turn in, and you do wait a little bit in order for the car to actually turn in with you. But overall, I do like the steering feel. I think it has a good weight to it, and it seems pretty precise. As far as the brake pedal, it's a firm actuation, so there's not a whole lot of travel, uh, and it's pretty sensitive to the touch. But that said, it does have a nice modulation to it, and it is easy to control how much braking you want. And pretty much the same story with the throttle. You can easily modulate how much throttle you want, and, you know, it's, it's nothing too, there's no dead band in there. It's a nice progression as you put your foot down. And so I do like that. And you also get quite a bit of turbo sound, which is pretty weird to hear in a Mustang. You know, it's a muscle car and you hear this turbocharger spooling up every time you put your foot down. I think that's probably the most prominent noise you hear is the turbo. You've got this that you kind of hear as it builds up. And it does sound good. It's certainly a fun car to drive, even with the automatic. You do have these paddle shifters, and one thing that's kind of weird about the paddle shifters is there's not a select mode in which they're used. Uh, you can just use them at any time, and then after a while, if you stop using them, it'll put it back into the regular mode where it just shifts for you. So that's a little bit weird. Um, as far as the shifting, you know, it's kind of the same story with automatic transmissions. Uh, it's not incredibly fast and sometimes it is a little bit jolty. So, you know, it's, it's not the greatest as far as the paddle shifters go, but it's there if you want it, you can let it shift. I find that if you put it in the sport mode, uh, it actually does a pretty good job of downshifting when you need it to and upshifting when you need it to, and it keeps it in the high revs, keeps you in the power band. Uh, and so overall, I just kind of let it do its thing in the automatic sport mode. Now that said, if you do get the manual transmission and you do get the hardtop, I think there are some serious benefits to that. You're dropping 110 pounds, and on top of that, the manual transmission has more aggressive gearing for all six gears, and it also has a more aggressive final drive. So you're going to get significantly better acceleration out of the manual transmission. You're going to get significantly better torque delivery out of the manual transmission. And so if you're going for performance, that would be the option that makes sense. Now clearly, if you're buying the convertible EcoBoost, you're not going for performance. And why do I say that? Well, because this car starts higher than the GT Fastback. So you can get the GT Fastback a little over $32,000. This is around $35,000 for the EcoBoost convertible. So clearly you're going for something else. You're getting fuel efficiency, you're getting the benefit of a convertible, and you know, it is a nice experience without a doubt. And also the convertible, one thing they've done that's a nice job is they've kept the trunk a good size. You don't really lose much at all with a convertible versus a lot of cars you lose significant cargo space. With the Mustang, they've kept the trunk pretty large. I think it's a little over 11 uh, cubic feet, which is pretty good for a convertible. 
Okay, so we'll get a quick zero to 60 pull in. I've got it in track mode, and we're gonna be using the onboard zero to 60 accelerometer so we can figure out actually in real time how quick it was. So I'll come to a stop, automatic start, press OK to begin. And zero to 60 in 5.7 seconds. So not too bad considering that this is the automatic and the convertible has less aggressive gearing than the manual and it also has added weight due to the convertible. So 5.7 seconds, decent acceleration out of it, not all that bad. So, driving on the highway, you know, when you do have the top up, it's actually not too loud in here, even though it is the convertible. I was looking at about 78, 79 decibels, which, you know, it is on the higher end, but for a convertible, it's not all that bad. Um, I believe the Fastback will probably do a little bit better of a job of canceling out some of the noise. Mostly what you hear is road noise. You don't necessarily hear quite as much wind noise. Um, so overall, you know, the interior, not too bad in here driving on the highway when you're going at about 65 miles an hour. So thank you guys for watching. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. I can see clearly now the roof is gone.